I think what we are watching in increasing numbers is people converting to the religion of wokeness. And the religion of wokeness is really exciting stuff. The religion of wokeness has all the other stuff that religions have. It has catechisms, things that you're just supposed to listen and repeat. You may not understand them, but if you don't repeat them, this means you're bad and you have sinned. It's got a nearly impenetrable code. The the code is constantly changing and it's constantly moving. You have no idea what the standard is from day to day, but that code is brought to you by a priestly caste of really intelligent and woke people who will be able to absolve you of sin so long as you listen to everything they they say. There is an intermediary between you and wokeness. The intermediary is, is fairly obvious. Right? It is all the members of the New York Times editorial board. It is all the people who tweet angrily on Twitter. It is your late night host. But even they have intermediaries. They have to call in some of their black friends, as we saw on all of the late night TV shows last night, in order to interpret blackness for them so that they can absolve themselves of their own white privilege. It's got sacrificial rights. Right? People who are, are bad, who do, not, who do not mouth the proper catechism, are immediately destroyed. And there's no forgiveness. And right? there's no forgiveness. And it's got public atonement rituals where you're supposed to come out and make apologies for absolutely anodyne things. If you if you do not repeat things loud enough or long enough, then you are considered bad. The, the religion of wokeness suggests a bunch of conflicting things. And the only way to avoid the conflict is to just listen and repeat, listen and believe. Right. That's the basic idea here. So we have heard over the past 48 hours a few things. Well, past, I would say several years, but really exacerbated in the last 48 hours. We've heard. That speech is violence. So if I say something you don't like, I have enacted violence upon you. I used to hear this when I would speak at college campuses. People were literally chanting speech is violence when I spoke at UC Berkeley. Also, silence is violence. So if you don't speak, that's a form of violence. So if you do speak and we don't like it, that's violence. If you don't speak, that is also a form of violence. So America has now adopted tap dancing, apparently, as its new solution or mimery. I mean, that that, because if you speak, it's violence. If you don't speak, it's violence. So We have to find some other form of communication. The religious nature of wokeness is incredible. It is a substitute for religion. People are filling a God-shaped hole in their hearts with performative virtue signaling. And what the virtue signaling is really designed to do in the end is to separate separate you off from the non-believers. It really isn't designed to actually be virtuous. It is not that you're doing anything virtuous. When you kneel as a white person in front of a black protester and then suggest that America is endemically racist. That is not you being a virtuous person. That is you actively separating yourself off from people who will not do that. It is you suggesting, because you're not actually taking on the sin. What you're actually doing is saying, I am not responsible for the sins of the past. I am not responsible for any of the bad things going on in society. Please leave me alone. All those other white folks who are not doing this, those are the people who are responsible. So it's it's amazing to watch this blossom and, and become the state religion of the United States. It's, it's obviously the religion in Europe. You've seen tens of thousands of people in Europe marching about police brutality in the United States, which is fairly interesting, considering that over in Europe, they have a significant problem with, for example, massive anti-Semitism that has led to the mass exodus of Jews from Europe. But haven't seen a lot of marches about that in Europe. Hong Kong was recently completely taken over by the Chinese government and its millions of citizens subjected to the jackboot of the Chinese government. No protests about that. But when it comes to America being bad, that's something we can all agree on, because America, as the leader of Western civilization, that really is the new religion. The new religion is that the first article of faith is that America is bad, was bad, will be bad, was rooted in corruption and evil. And therefore, if we can all march together about that, we can separate ourselves off from the stench of evil Western civilization, and we can rip on people. Now, again, none of this is to argue that marching against police brutality is bad. Marching against police brutality is fine. We all agree on that. But that is not the program that is being promulgated by members of the media. It is not the program that is being promulgated by many of the protesters. I would say most of the protesters, they're not out there marching about police brutality purely. They're out there marching with the assumption that America is systemically and endemically racist and that American law enforcement is systemically and endemically racist. If this were just about police brutality, there wouldn't be any kneeling. And if this were just about police brutality, there wouldn't be any talk about how America has deep, unextirpated sin that everyone in America is responsible for unless you do all these things that the woke want you to do. If this were just about police brutality, we'd all agree. As I pointed out yesterday, we all agree on certain fundamental propositions. Proposition number one, police brutality is evil. Number two, we all agree rioting and looting is evil. Number three, we all agree individual instances of racism, right? Actual instances of racism are evil, right? We're, We're all in agreement on that, but that's not what these marches are about. What these marches have become about is a broader agenda, which is, basically suggesting that America at root, root and branch, is very, very, very bad. And the media have taken that to the logical extreme by suggesting that rioting and looting are merely an extension of the protests. Now, again, do I think all the protesters believe this? No. But I think that the messaging that is being put forth 
including the kneeling, the, the obvious attempt to mimic the message that was put forth by Colin Kaepernick, right? That is clearly the message that is now being put forth by many of the protesters. And that I object to because if you can split the messages, I'm all for one, I'm not for the other. All against police brutality, all against racism, all against the uh, all against the the use of of policing in the wrong ways. All of that agreed. Against rioting, all of, all of that agreed. But if the idea here, and as we'll see, this is the idea. If the idea is that if you don't greenlight rioting and looting, that if you say that rioting and looting should be stopped, if you believe that America is actually an incredible, wonderful place, and the story of America is a story of tremendous founding principles, an un an unchallenged good philosophy that was that was failed by Americans for centuries. But the story of America is the perfection of our behavior in accordance with original ideals. So the story of America is America getting better in accordance with founding ideals. If you believe that's the case, then you are to be thrown out. And as we'll see, this is actually what is happening to people, right? If you say that America is a good place and the flag is good, you will now be called out as not being sufficiently woke and you will be called racist.